Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick. Uh, dropping in on you this afternoon. Uh, it's been crazy. Uh, I keep saying that, but you have no idea. Uh, but I'm still standing, I'm still breathing, I'm still in the fight. And things are happening. It's just not happening as fast as I wanted, wanted to and in the manner that I thought it would. But it's coming together because what? I'm relentless, I don't quit, I don't give up, and I don't shut down. Uh, here's what I need you to do. Um, those who have been keeping up, we've been in kind of a whirlwind, there's been a lot going on. Uh, we temporarily uh, suspended uh, services and programs for the Odyssey Project. I canceled that suspension uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, amid of a bunch of stuff that was hitting my desk that needed to be addressed whether I wanted uh, to do it the way that we've been doing it or not it needs to be addressed uh, so once again we need your support I don't know if you saw the story about Asia uh, Womack I don't know if you saw the story uh, about the young woman uh, uh, Tamara can't think of her uh, last name, but here in Houston. So two uh, deaths where black men took the lives of young black women. I mean, 122, 121, 122. Uh, one was intimate partner violence or former intimate partner violence. Her ex showed up at her parents' house, locked the, locked the door with him and her in the bedroom and killed her and killed himself. Uh, the, the issue in Dallas, 21-year-old girl beat, beats a family friend in basketball. He's embarrassed, upset, goes home, comes back with a gun and shoots her five times. 31-year-old uh, black male shoots and kills. Um, and all the people who want to talk about, well, I'm pretty sure it was more than just a... It doesn't matter what it is. What matters is that we are taking lives senselessly. Uh, I don't doubt that because I'm, I'm telling you now my life is to the tilt and not once have I thought about harming anyone especially not the women in my life um, I, I, part of being a man is being able to stabilize your emotions it's, being a man isn't being emotionless I think that's another error and failure that we've had in the black community is teaching young boys that men don't cry, men don't feel, men basically don't have hearts. No, being a man isn't being emotionless. Being a man is having the capacity to stabilize your emotions and make reasonable and responsible decisions that serve you, your loved ones, your family, and your friends. When you do something that is that catastrophically uh, devastating, you don't just end the life of an individual, you devastate their entire family. In the process, devastating yours, because the guy I know for a fact who killed the young girl in Dallas behind the basketball game had several children. So now they're going to be without their father for probably their entire childhood at least. And we need to deal with that. Um, and so uh, a big part of what I do is addressing African-American adolescent and young adult male violence through socialization, through a program called Back Black Men Lead. Uh, other programs that are on deck are uh, the work we're doing with young black women and uh, the issues they deal with from childhood, childhood sexual abuse, incest, uh, and other forms of trauma uh, that they deal with. Um, also, look, we are suffering in so many different areas. I have close to 2,000 videos just on this channel alone. I've written 25 books. I have thousands of articles that I've written, videos on other uh, social media networks, lectures, and so much more on this. This has been my life's work. I'm trying to tell you that 
sitting around and waiting for something to happen isn't going to get it done. Uh, sitting around complaining and whining and blaming isn't going to get it done. What we're going to have to do is actually get behind programs, get involved, be a part of the solution, be actively engaged as a person, be actively engaged in ways that you are naturally affected. Not everybody's meant to be on the front line. Not everybody's meant to be in that. So definitely get into that. Look, I'm not going to be long before you because again, it's been a long day uh, up at four o'clock and I've been going and it's been one thing after another. Uh, but um, today definitely didn't start out the way I wanted it to, but hey, <laughs> that's been the story lately. Uh, but I still am grateful and thankful for my life, for the opportunity to do what it is I do, uh, for a heart to love, um, and, and so much more. Now, let's talk real briefly. I've shared a video that I definitely want you guys to check out. Uh, it's a two-part series. I share the video and then the link to the second video, second part of the interview is in the description box of the video of the one I shared. And it is the um, interview Tucker Carlson just did with Kanye. And I think it's something that people who can think critically needs to see. I'm not telling a person how to think. I think that's one of the problems is everybody's looking for somebody to tell them who to be mad at, who to be upset with, uh, why we should be upset and a bunch of other things. And I think we need to be able to be able to listen. And another thing we need to be able to do is constructively analyze opposing views. There's nothing wrong with opposing a view, but can you break it down and analyze it? Can you, outside of your emotions, uh, build an argument against it. Uh, just being upset because you don't like the way it sounds isn't good enough. So it doesn't matter what side of the coin you fall on in this interview. It's going to challenge you to think because it's going to take you to places that you're going to hear something coming out of the mouth of a person you're probably not feeling right now saying exactly what you're thinking. And you know, to some people, that what that's what makes him dangerous. That's definitely what makes Candace Owens, Owens dangerous. That's a bunch of stuff she says, and you just want to walk up and, and, and choke the hell out of her. Then there's other stuff she said, you like, that was right on. And what we have to learn how to do is be able to put the messenger aside and listen to the message. Because nobody's going to be on point 100% of the time. Nobody's going to say everything you want to hear. No one is going to be that person you agree with 100% of the time. That's just simply not how life works. There's nobody I know that I agree with 100% of the time. And that is something that we need to be aware of and we need to be accountable for. So I definitely want you to take a look at that. There are so many things going on all at one time. You got that situation going on. You got the Roland Martin situation going on with Kamala Harris. Um, There's so many different things happening simultaneously. And it's easy to get misdirected. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to find yourself just jumping from one emotional experience to the next emotional experience and not really stopping and thinking this thing through and asking yourself, number one, how is this impacting me? Number two, am I able to actually affect a change in this? And if it's something that you literally believe that you cannot affect a change in, let it go. Don't invest yourself in things that you don't see the capacity to impact. That powerlessness has an extremely negatively a negative effect on you. Find things that you know your energy, your effort, your thinking can change. Invest in those things heavily because that's where you're going to develop your confidence. That's where you're going to develop your power. That's where you're going to start to gain traction in understanding how you can be a change maker in this world that seems to be absolutely uh, upside down uh, in way of moral standard, in way of moral code, in way of so many other things. My challenge is that we come to a place to where we're not sitting around feeling hopeless. 
feeling helpless. Uh, there's a thing called learned helplessness. What it is, is you try something enough times and you can't make anything change. You can't do anything about it. And what you will do is you will develop a helplessness that you determine is just a part of that particular situation and you'll give up. Uh, there's a thing called vicarious learned helplessness where you'll watch someone else try over and over again and through watching them and being connected with them and experiencing their pain, their frustration, their disappointment, you'll develop a sense of helplessness about the same thing. Even though you've never tried to do anything about it, you will just automatically do it. And we have a lot of that going on in the black community. That vicarious learned helplessness is a great reason why we sit idly by and why I complain, throw tantrums, but never really truly take action. It's time for us to get out of that. It's time for us to rise up and do something different. We have to uh, assume responsibility for our actions, assume, assume responsibility for the things that are going on around us, and we can't continuously play victim and ever experience power. Uh, I'm going to get off. Uh, I could talk about this for God knows how long, but what I want to do is I want to challenge everybody to be a part of the solution once again. Uh, we are going to aggressively address this issue with black male violence. It's something that I've been passionate about for years. It's something I've written on for years. The Black Man Lead program is over 10 years old. Um, we have been talking about socializing young black males for an extremely long time, long before I did the program. But once I did my research into African-American adolescent and young adult male violence and discovered uh, one of the most effective tools is proper racial socialization. I immediately started to look around and, and observe and all of the high performing groups have some form of rite of passage. Mal the males in the racial group aren't just left to discover what they're supposed to be and hope they hit it. They're not left to figure it out. They are told, taught, it is inculcated into their psyche at very early ages what's expected of them, how they fit into it, the responsibilities they not only have to themselves and their families, but to the race. All of this is taking place and we don't have it. We don't have a universal rite of passage. We don't have something that defines manhood and defines the code of manly behavior in a way that we can sit up and hold people accountable. Obviously, it's obvious you don't kill anyone. But what happens is when we don't have a value on life and we don't place a responsibility on the man to protect that value, then when that man can't see value, not only will he not protect it, he'll destroy it because there's no value to it. And that's our responsibility. We can sit up and we can talk about it, we can argue, we can sit up and push the envelope, we can do everything we can to sit up and not be responsible and not have to take action. At the end of the day, how our grandchildren inherit this world is gonna be dependent upon what we do now. On that note, look, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, try to unwind, it's been, like I said, it's been one of them days. Uh, you guys keep me lifted. And I am going to get off of here. And I don't know what if I'm going to even smoke a cigar today. I'm just going to hang out with the guys and talk noise. Because I'm pretty sure some Dallas Cowboy fans in there that are so easy to trigger. Uh, on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.